So today I'm joined by my friend Youngie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Doing well, thank you, Youngie. Good. It's actually your, your, Youngie. Your real name is John, isn't it? But, yeah, John Young. Yeah. John Young. But uh, have you been called Youngie a long time, or is this, yeah, uh, since I went to school. <laughs> oh, so you went to school. So you're pretty used to being called by your yep. family name, by your yep. surname. No, it's good when you get old. You still feel young. <laughs> With a name like that, as you should do anyway, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So anyway, Young is with me today, and we're meeting in Chiang Mai, uh, where uh, Youngie lives. Is yeah. that right? Yes. You live in right in the city, or I oh, just over the river, over in Long Hoi. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you been there? Uh, nine years. I've lived in Chiang Mai. Yeah. Nine years in Chiang Mai, but not the whole time in that one place, I no, suppose. No, I was in a hotel for a couple of years, and then then I moved out there straight away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So probably seven years out there. Seven yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. So obviously you like it here, otherwise you wouldn't choose to be here so long. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's good. It's good living here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And were you the whole time in Chiang Mai or you lived in other parts of Thailand as well? No, no other parts, but I do move around a lot. Some you move around say, a lot on your bike. Some people say I don't live in Chiang Mai, I live in Thailand. You, know? <laughs> you just live on your, on your motorbike. Yeah, maybe, and in yeah. hotels, and yeah. <laughs> anywhere and everywhere. Because we met, we met on a on a bike ride sometime. I can't remember when it was, or where we were, but it was somewhere in the area. Yeah, near here, wasn't it? On a on a bike trip sometime. Yeah, we've done a few trips with unsanctioned riders, I think, or crusties or one of those mobs. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but you do a lot of biking on your own, don't you? Yes. Yeah, uh, I like I like it both. Yeah. I like doing it on my own as well. And at one point before I got my Royal Enfield, the little classic I'm riding now. Yeah. I had almost the same bike as you. I was riding the That's Honda. Right. The end, mine was an NC700. Oh yeah, mine's the NC750. Yeah. That's right. And they both yeah. have the, they both have the DCT, which is yeah, which is great for lazy people like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because it means you don't have to change gear unless you want to, because the bike will do that for That's you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I remember, I think on that trip where we first met, I think we were both riding the same almost the same bike yeah, um, yeah both on the 700 or 750 dct the honda yeah nc yes and uh yeah uh we and it's 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 fairly uncommon in thailand i think the bike isn't that isn't that no popular, there's not that many really. around but they're, yeah. they're around yeah for sure because most people who ride Hondas, they ride Hondas that are made in Thailand. That tends to be like the yeah, this was like an the import, CRF or the 500. Yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah. Um, but okay, so what is what has it brought you to Thailand in the first place? Oh, just the roads and the people and uh, the whole way of life. Oh well, uh, and was that seven or nine years ago now, or yeah, how long so ago was that? It's probably even better then. I, I started coming 15 years ago. Okay. And then I only coming once a year, then twice a year. Then yeah. I started planning to move here, and it it took me four or five years to actually sell my bits and pieces and farms and everything. And oh yeah, what were you doing? You were back in Australia uh, before you moved here. Yeah, well, I had a had a farm and um, a trucking business, and I had a bike over there and started riding and. Uh, it just took a fair while to get all that sold up. So you were farming, here. and where that was in Queensland, was it? Yeah, it was farming just south of Brisbane in the end, and uh, only in a small way there. But um, just trying to think of the timing of it all, but I had a wood shavings business in Brisbane itself. Oh, yeah. And we had about 20 odd trucks carting sawdust all over the place for chicken farms and horse stables. So was that a byproduct of something else you yes. were doing? No, it was just coming from sawmills. And oh, so you were buying, you were like an intermediary, you were going around the sawmills buying the yes. their, their, their chippings and sawdust or whatever and well, then reselling it? Is that how it when we When we started, they were paying us to take it away. Oh, okay. And yeah. then in the end, the shavings, and we had other competitors and we'd be bidding against each other to get the material. And uh, I think they ended up selling their waste for more than the wood, their furniture. Yeah. So they were really sharpening us a bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's funny how that things like that happen. I was on the, I was on one of these Hash House Harrier runs. I'm going back a long time now, probably 15 years. 
and uh, in Penang in Malaysia, and there was a guy on that hash, uh, ethnic Indian, like a lot of the Penang hashes are ethnic Indians. Yeah. And this guy, and what was unusual about the hash, this particular hash chapter in uh, Penang, it had its own house. It wasn't just a little rental place. Uh -huh. It actually was a property that belonged, in fact, to one of these hashes. Yeah. And his hash name was Rusty Nail. And the reason why his name was Rusty Nail is that he was in the scrap metal business uh, and he'd been in it before scrap metal became yeah. interesting to, for anybody. Yes. And he became seriously rich. Yes. Seriously rich. Yes. Because yes. I think what happened was that China in particular started buying up all the scrap metal okay. to melt down to make steel or other yes. metal products. Yes. And he went from being, a, I wouldn't say a social outcast, but from being a yeah. Pretty ordinary sort of person. A garbage collector. Yeah. To a over, oh, not overnight, but over a couple of years. Yeah. He went from that to being very, very wealthy. Yeah, I've seen the same happen in Australia. Yeah, with and I can, so of... that rings a bell when you say yeah. about how the you were you were being paid to collect that uh, sawdust. Yeah. At the end of the business, <laughs> people were paying probably good money to, to buy it. Yeah? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's interesting. And you were doing that? You started doing that when you were farming. Your main job at the time was farming, was it? No, the main job was, I had chicken farm. Oh yeah. So in between. So you cattle. needed that product as well for I your chickens. I needed it for the farm. Yeah. yeah. So that's what started me off. And yeah. then I, then I just ended up doing that and I sold the chicken farm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now you've been doing that a long time as well, have you? The uh, chicken farm? Probably 10 years, I think, maybe. Yeah, mm. something like that. I know farming, has gone through phases in Australia, isn't it? I mean, not so much, I don't hear much about the chicken farmers, but a yeah. lot of the other people that had really rough times, and especially yeah. with flooding and droughts and all sorts of things. Yes. But yes. maybe in your sort of chickens are more, I guess, more controllable than... It was a pretty controlled industry. Yeah. Um, you know, that people were eating chickens all the time, so it was regular. Yeah. Regular income and regular expenses and nothing, yeah. nothing and you changed too much. You weren't dependent on the climate like uh, like I guess the cattle farmers and whatnot who depend on the That's you right. know having fodder for the for the cattle at That's all right times. but the the companies we grew for they supplied the feed. Oh yeah. So it, it did affect them a bit if there was a drought they'd yeah. have to buy their grain from the other side Western Australia or somewhere yeah. else and it yeah. cost more. Yeah. But, yeah. But anyway, you were, when you started coming to Australia, uh, sorry, coming to Thailand about 15 years ago. Yep. Then you began to think quite early on, oh, this might yeah. be a nice place to live. For sure. Yeah. I decided there and then. I just, oh, really? I've got to start so, sorting myself so out. So about the, the first time you came and you were just on holiday at the time? You were, yeah, I only came for two weeks. And yes. you were doing the regular beach thing at the time, were you? Down on one of the beaches no, somewhere? No, no, I've come up here. I had a friend in uh, oh, Chiang Mai. Oh, I see. So right from the beginning, because a lot of people yeah. tend to discover southern Thailand or the beaches first, and then they yeah. come up north. Yeah, no, But I you came straight, straight up here. Yes. And were you biking from the beginning up here? Yes, yes. Because you'd already been biking back in, in no, Australia. Not all the time, but I just started. You just I started had, about 15 years ago? Yeah, just started again. I mean, I did okay. when I yeah. was young. When you were younger. Yeah. Then and I then you it gave it up and then you went back to it again. Yeah. yeah. And how was it when you came about 15 years ago? Was part of the part of the equation when you said, thought to yourself, oh, this could be a place to live, was biking already part of that equation when you were thinking at the time? Yes. This would be a nice place to live and bike as well. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's, it's Great roads and just, yeah, very good. And what? I guess you had a rental bike when you were up here then? Yeah. I used to rent one and my yeah. mate, he had his own, so I would just travel around And you went together. on, and you, that's when you started biking about, when you when you came on holiday here, originally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had maybe a year or two before in Australia, yes. I'm sorry, when you started biking here in Australia. Yeah. And you were already doing the, like the back roads of the Golden Triangle, that sort of thing, were yeah. you? When, and he was keen on biking too, I guess, was he your mate? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So that's, that's great. So that's an interesting way to get introduced to it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yep. you be already pretty soon after you started coming, you began to think about how to get rid of your farm, how to get rid of your chickens. Yeah. Uh, yep. And it took you two or three years to do that, though, didn't yes. it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, probably five altogether. <laughs> yeah. Five years, and so you've got no more connections to the farming not, business not now. Not directly, just indirectly through my through son your family. And, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So 
So you don't have any regrets about that, then, no. I'm guessing? No, no, it's great. <laughs> and it's easy to go back and see the family. And yeah. They're yeah. always welcome to come here and visit me. Too, Absolutely. And have, have they been occasionally, some of your family? Yes, yes, yes. I, my daughter's been three or four times, and my son's been once or twice. I can't remember now. Yeah. Okay. And are they into biking at all, or, or oh, not? My son gets on a bike and goes, yeah. So been, when he visits, you get on a, on a bike each, and you go up in the hills? Yeah. Yes, yeah, nice. we did, yeah. Because what I remember from that very first time when we met and we were on the trip together up here is that you seemed to know all the back roads. You seemed to have them in your head. You yeah. didn't even need to look at the map yeah. or the Google Maps. Yeah. Well, I just, I tended to do a lot of riding by myself. Yeah. Because I leave early in the morning and no one else would get up the same time as me. Yeah. So I'd just go and explore and I'd just want to see what was over that hill and what was over this yeah. hill and I yeah. want to go a bit further all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And 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 what about parts parts of the country that you prefer to bike in? Is it mainly up here or Yeah, mainly up here. Yeah. But I sort of saturated a lot of it up here. Yeah. So we started going south um just before COVID. Okay, so, so you went where did you, when you say south, does it mean just southern Thailand or you went down into Malaysia or uh, Thailand, no, Thailand, not, not yeah, out okay. of Thailand. Yeah, Phuket and Koh Samui, and down the other side, down Hat Yai and Yala. Okay, but I think it's probably true to say that because you've been ten years and more up here, you probably know the northern Thailand best of all. I expect do you. Yeah, but I still get lost and still uh, find new roads. You know, okay. it's, it's that's still... a good way to get. That's a good way to find new roads is to get lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I guess. Yeah. Yes. And what, do you have a particular? way of doing it that you prefer when you go, say you go off? Do you prefer to go without using a map or knowing where you're going or how do you do it? I, I, I prefer to go by myself and explore new roads by myself Yeah. because I'm not going to be holding people up when I'm looking up my map and yeah. you know they all think, oh, you're lost again. Yeah. Well, I am, but I'm just working it out myself yeah. where I'm going to go next. Yeah. And I know I'm going to go from this town to that town, but I can't actually see the full road on the map. But yeah. I go and figure it out along yeah. the way. Yeah. And when you go, are you normally just like a day trip or you take, normally take two or three days? Uh, both, all both. sorts, yeah. yeah. Depends how far. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I go for a day trip and I come back in three days. Yeah. And okay. the first time that happened, well, <laughs> I throw the toothbrush in every time now. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that can happen too. I, my, what I've noticed is that, especially with a group, and I tend to be riding with other people, is that, and especially nowadays, that nearly everybody is using some sort of digital map. Normally it's Google or something similar to Google. My problem is, and I'm sure there's an easy way around it, is that when I come back, I'm a whole day's riding, I don't know where I've been, basically. That's, and it's uh, partly about being yeah. in a group, and it's partly about having digital maps rather than a p yeah. paper map where I can actually physically see yes. and follow it on the map. Yes, yes. No, you're and, right. You're right there. It is a bit hard to remember where you'd been. And then if you yeah. do ask me, have I yeah. been to this town, I, I wouldn't know. No. Until I went back and looked at the map and I thought, oh, yeah. Well, I, sometimes I go places and I realize I have been there before, yeah. but I'd forgotten because I yeah. haven't registered the name. And again, Names, Thai names, yeah. and not speaking Thai. Well, really. that's that's, that's part of the problem. Yeah. problem. But yeah. I think, I think there's a lot to be said. I think in the old days where everybody had to use paper maps, yeah, before the internet and before Google Maps, yeah, I think people, well, certainly I would have known a lot more than I do now where I am at yeah. any one time, probably. Yes, yes. Because you plot your route and you, in the evening you look at where you've been and so on. And as I say, that's one of the things I need to. And I did buy a map, but it wasn't easy to find one, actually. Yeah. Finding good, detailed, uh, you know, paper maps yeah. is, is, is not so easy in Thailand. Maybe, it, maybe it's the same yeah. everywhere now. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, they, they probably are going on the out, you know, the maps are probably going on the out, paper maps, yeah. because yeah. of the digital Google Maps and all that. Yeah. So they're not, they're not as popular, but they're still out there. They are. And the one I bought, unfortunately, I did put in with a felt tip pen. I did put in a couple of routes, but I've yes, neglected you it. You soon black know. it out. I've neglected it. Yes, that's the, other, that's the other problem. If you keep going back to the same sort of <laughs> popular roads, yeah. Poochie Far and so on, you tend to be yeah. going over those roads. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's one of the things. Maybe I need to invest in an app, one of those apps, 
yeah. some of them you pay money for, yeah. where you can store, that's a good idea as well, you can store yes. the, the route yes. you've been on. Yes, yes, and, I'd like um, to see the, yeah. where I'd been. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's one of the ins and outs of, of biking. So 10 years, in, 10 years in, in Chiang Mai, you said at the beginning you were living in a hotel. Yeah. For a couple of years. Yeah, just down the end of, uh, in Royal Lana, just near the Iron Bridge. Okay. Yeah. And what happened? Did you buy a place in the end, your own place? Or no, still renting. Still renting, yeah. yeah. Because uh, I know quite a few, quite a few of the people we know, in the bikers groups that we that we sometimes ride with, yeah, uh, have bought their own places. Yeah. And it, in in practice, it means either they're married to a Thai and they're then able, through yeah. their spouse, to buy a, a house. Yes. Or it's a condo, which includes land, or anybody can buy the condo even if you don't have a Thai connection, yeah. Thai partner. As long as it's not over 51% owned by foreigners. Oh, the whole, okay, the condominium has to be most, mainly it has Thai to be, owned. yeah. Okay, that's interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So anyway, but you didn't go down that route of buying a condominium and maybe, maybe the best time to buy would have been 10 or 15 years ago because Prices have gone up quite a lot, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Some areas have, some haven't. And yeah. um, I mean, when you're renting, you can move, you can yes. go back home, you yeah. can you're move more somewhere flexible. else, you yeah. can go to another country. You're that's, a lot freer. That's what I think too. I've got a, a house I rent um, in Chiang Rai, and that's my feeling about it too. Yeah. Um, is that I'm not, I'm not um, in the same idea. way yet, exactly tied down as I would be more if I'd bought somewhere. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, that's the downside maybe. Yeah. Um, and you, you said you didn't go down to Malaysia. You've only biked in Thailand or have you been across to Laos? How's that? I've been in to Laos. Yeah. It's very interesting and I like off road and rough yeah. tracks, but yeah, I couldn't say anything over there it was good or good roads. The roads are pretty bad, I've heard. I've never been there myself, but yeah. I, we know people in the unsanctioned group who love it in Laos. They go there yeah. two or three times yeah. a year. Yeah. Yeah, I, but, I, I do like it. It's yeah. just very behind here by another 10 or 20 years. Yes. And yeah, it's, I, I love that sort it's of thing. It's a very simple place, I yeah. think, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the roads are rough and there's potholes. and Yeah. Even the good bitumen are only short strips. Yeah. Then gravel and short strips and yeah. gravel. And, yeah. Um, I guess you need the right sort of bike for that as well, don't you then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to be a bit careful what bikes you take. Yeah. Maybe a CRF or something would be the... Best sort Probably of be the best. I yeah. took a V Strom 650 when I went. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and that was okay. But it's it's a bit of an adventure bike anyway. Yeah, it was good. Mm. Yeah, yeah, lighter bike or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, so you're you're retired, I guess, like me. Yeah, yes, so, retired. And what 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 is your life comprised of? Mostly biking. Is that what you keep yourself busy with mostly? Yes, yes. Oh, this last 12 months. I've been doing more on my own fitness and health and yeah, um, yeah I haven't done that many kilometers this last year. Yeah. Since I've started looking after my body a bit more and going to the gym and that's how I tore my... I was going to say, yeah, you, normally muscle. when I met you today you were wearing a sling on your yeah. arm yeah. and I was a little bit shocked when I asked you how you did that. You said you did it in the gym. Yeah. And thinking, well, that's another that's another pretext that I have for not going to the gym is yeah. hearing about gym in injuries. You know. Yeah, well, I was just just starting to get really fit, you know. Yeah, and then it happened. You had to have an operation, you said. Yeah. Yes, they operated on it. It, it had torn right off the bone. Oh, it didn't sound really so nice. So they had to put a sort of screw in or some oh, sort dear. of spring-looking thing and pull all the bits back. And it sounds very painful. What did you say, what did you say it was called? What you did yourself? Or rotor cuff, torn rotor cuff torn muscle. Torn rotor cuff. Yeah. You must have been, what were you doing, lifting very heavy weights or something? What was no, it? I just think I'd stopped for a month when I went back to Australia. Then I oh, started yeah. again and yeah. I probably started a little bit too quickly. Yeah, yeah. And maybe not warmed up enough. Yeah, people say like that. that's very important. Yeah. yeah. I've heard, I've not, as I say, I don't go near gyms. Yeah, well, no, so I, I don't have the experience. I've, I've found out that it's yeah. not a lie, it's the yeah. truth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So and you also do some biking back in Australia because I remember... Yeah. Seeing on Facebook, you did some posts maybe yeah. last year sometime? Yeah, I kept... Charity runs and things? Yeah, I kept one big bike over there, a big old bagger, and it just tours me around, and it's a comfortable old thing, and yeah. So, so how does it, how is biking in Australia compared with here, then? Is it very different? 
Oh, it's a lot different. The roads are long and straight. And when yeah. you get in the outback where we like to go because there's not so much law and traffic lights and yeah. traffic and people, when you get out there, they, they put a corner in every 100 miles, or every 100k, <laughs> just to keep you awake. Okay, you know? yeah. Because <laughs> I know on paper at least, I think it's like a 110 kilometer speed limit. Yeah, in, it's 100 in most places. In 100 in most places. Yeah. And I've, I've seen also on YouTube, I watched recently uh, Australian guy, and he had us. It was already a pretty soup. What was the bike? It was a very fast, might have been a Ducati or something. Yeah. And he was doing some in Australia, and he was doing some extra work on it with, uh, you know, extra sport shocks and aftermarket exhaust. And he was doing something to the power to make it yeah. something crazy, like 100 and I don't yeah. know how much, 50. And I, I couldn't help thinking, wait a minute, you're living in a country. Yeah. Where you're probably not going to get out of third gear on that bike, you know, if it's well, like 100 or 110. Yeah. Unless they're just obviously going off in the outback where they don't think there's any speed traps. They could be doing that, traps or, or, or they, they, they could just know know the routes they're on. Yeah. Or they might just be doing track work on the weekends too, a lot yeah. of them. Because that's the other thing I more recently discovered is some very good uh, off road type channels yep. in Australia. Yep. And it, then it occurred to me, ah, now wait a minute, this makes sense. This is the sort of biking that does make sense. Yeah. Because then it's not about doing a hundred and something. No. It's about enjoying the yeah. rough terrain. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're on a CRF or a dual sport of some sort. That's right. And there's a lot of that, those back roads that, and unlike some countries, you're allowed to go on them. Yeah. Because I know in Europe or even and in the UK, people talk about green lanes. Yes. And a lot of those back lanes. You've got to be careful because they, you know, the farmer doesn't like it or somebody else know, doesn't like yeah, it. Yeah. Whereas I think in Australia it seems to be that a lot of those, well, most of the roads here are are available and yeah. tracks and tracks are available. Well, I don't know. The places I'll run over there, my own farms. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't have a. You wouldn't let somebody else. We in wouldn't there. let someone go riding through no. there. No. And yet here you you ride through everyone's backyard. Well, and I was going to say everything, that's, and they're all quite happy for you to that, do it. That's another difference because first of all, the speed thing is not such a big issue, not up north at least. Yeah. As far as I know, there's very I haven't really seen any real. I'm sure there are speed traps around, but I've never really noticed them. Yes. Yes. Uh, probably more in the city than in the out in the country where we prefer to ride. Yeah. And then yeah, first of all, there's not such an uh, it's not such a uh, you know, strict control of speed like you would have in Australia. No. And even if you did get caught speeding, the fines would be yeah, very not, not the end of the world. Would be nominal. There'd be like five or ten dollars yeah. equivalent here. Whereas in Australia, it'd probably take your license off you if well, you went yes, too fast. Yes, you know. I, I know. I, I lose a couple of points every time I go back. Really? And, well, okay. And that probably keeps me here more. <laughs> oh, that's another reason to be here. So you've got quite a big bike, because I noticed you did a charity run or something, didn't you? Yes, yes. Well, so what did. was that about? Uh, we've been doing it for Spinal Bifida for about 15 years now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they're just changing to another uh, another firm now to sponsor something else, but or they're looking for something else at this point. But, yeah, we do a five-day, about 3,000 kilometres, out in the outback. Okay. And we camp at different towns every night. And we say we, how many people are involved in that then? How many? Uh, it's around 300 to 400. Wow. Yeah. All on bikes? All on. Oh, there's some take cars and caravans. Okay, but mostly bikes, is it? Mostly bikes, yeah. Yeah. And they're all sorts, not just. Yeah, no, all sorts. So little bikes and big bikes. Uh, you get a couple of scooters, not many. It's not like here, where there's yeah. scooters everywhere, but. Yeah. No, you get a couple of scooters, but m mainly they're. Harleys, BMWs, Hondas, all the adventure bikes and yeah. such. Yeah. And sports bikes. So. Yeah. Uh, back in Australia, you said you went on this charity run. You've been doing it for 10 years, you said? Oh, about 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. For spina bifida? For, for spinal bifida. And another one we do is for uh, prostate cancer. Okay. Occasionally, and uh, been on a couple of them. And they're all good. And that's a big group. How many people you said to go on that? The, the Three hundred to four hundred. That's a huge number. Yeah. And, but I mean, that must take a lot of marshalling, doesn't it? If you have that number no, of people. No, it, it's very simple the way they do it. There's no marshalling whatsoever. Uh huh. They just give us a campsite to be at every night. Oh, okay, you don't follow the pack or anything. No, we're do never together. Do your own thing. You're never together. That's actually very safe, much safer because yeah. I think if you're riding in convoy, yeah. that's a recipe for disaster because you're that's watching right. 
You're watching the person in front of you rather than watching the road or something like no, that. There's nothing is, organized, yeah. but yeah. it ends up sorting itself out very well. Oh, that's, that's so it's much because more, it's just a meeting point in the evening. So you've just got a meeting point and you've, you've got to be there by seven o'clock if you want to have the meal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because we get a meal with each yeah. day. Uh, yeah. a dinner and a breakfast. Oh, it's okay. And then yeah. that, at dinner, they'll give you the next day's run where you're going to. Okay. Oh, you don't know beforehand? No. Oh, that makes it more interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, more no, it's good. Mystery, yeah. magical mystery talk. Yeah. So, and uh, and you got, you said you got a, um, a 1700 cc? Yeah, 1730. 1730, what do you say the bike was again? It's a victory. A victory. Yeah, made by Polaris. Who, who now make the now make the um, Indians? The Indians. So it's the parent company of the Indians. Yeah, right. and they've, they've actually stopped making the victories now. So it's, have they? It's just on Beca its own. It's becoming a collector's item, maybe. Well, it it will. It's still a nice, very nice looking machine. It's a sort of a, a classic cruiser type bike, yeah. is it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and and yeah, that's Bang. a little bit different from the bike you're riding here normally. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the roads, of course, are that much different because you've got those long. That's right. Open roads. You don't That's have right. so many twisties no, like it, you do it, here. It works out great for the roads and the conditions yeah. over there. But yeah. today, I probably wouldn't buy the same. You know, after no. riding the adventure bikes here and that, I'd yeah. look for something different. But yeah. I've had it, and I doesn't cost me anything. No, and, no, no, no. And you, yeah. So that whenever you go back home, you can Just obviously get on it. Yeah, yeah you've got time, uh, yeah. and you can plan to go on some trips. You do some touring yeah. when you go yeah. back home as well. Yeah. I've just got a friend over there who rides it to the gym on the weekends. Okay. So it gets a run once oh, or twice a week. Good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So you do. Um, and what, what about anything else that you, apart from you've got the gym, which is maybe a, literally a sore point right now with you because of the <laughs> shoulder, which you had to have operated. But um, apart from the gym and apart from biking, anything else that you, you're active with here in Thailand? Oh, oh I've started a, a fair bit of hiking. Hiking yeah. in this last year. Okay. Since I've been in my fitness mood. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm really enjoying the hikes. Yeah. Go out at, with Doisetep walkers. So you would do that with a group normally? Yeah. But I don't know okay. where I'm going, so it's best okay. to follow people out there. And how many? What, how many? Uh, how long are these? Are those hikes normally? Yeah, ten to twenty kilometres. That's quite a distance, especially if you're in the heat. It's in a day, and so you tend to leave. Quite early to avoid the yeah, high eight, eight sun. o'clock, eight yeah. o'clock, something like that. Yeah. Maybe they'll do it a bit different in the summer. Or, yeah. But it's always been about eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but they're just so interesting. You go past elephant camps and waterfalls that and is, caves. Actually, and that is a good way to see the country because even on the bike, you see a lot, a lot more than you would in a bus or a car. Yeah. But I think if you're on your feet, if you're walking, if you're yeah. hiking, you're going to be seeing even more than you do on a bike. Yes. No, I really enjoy it because you can talk to all the other people. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and you can't do that on a bike too easily. No, no, you're right. No, it's an interesting idea. Yeah. You point at things and talk about what's going on and you meet yeah. nice people. And yeah. From and they, all, all over the world. Though, yeah. From all yeah. over the world. And they tend to be foreigners living here, expats, uh, yeah. Farang or the Thai There's, Thai a, there's a handful of Thais that do it with us. Yeah. Probably mostly the partners of some of the walkers, are they? No, or, no. No, independent times? Uh, independents. Yeah. yeah. Families, mother and son, okay. father and son. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, but you're not you're not linguistically challenged by having to speak Thai anyway, unless you, unless you no, want to. No, no. Uh, most of the walkers the guys are speaking that English. run them are, are yeah. English and yeah. uh, that, that. They're all English speaking. Yeah, English speaking, yeah. Yeah, so the Thais join us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They maybe like to practice their English as well. Yeah. Some yeah. of them, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So that you seem to keep yourself active anyway. Yeah, well, that, that just come off from the getting fit and that sort of thing. And uh, I started doing it. I thought, well, this is, a, this is better exercise than I get at the gym anyway. Yeah. And more. I'm seeing stuff and I'm out in the fresh air. And, and you're not going to do, what do they call it again? The, the right joint? cuff. Oh, yeah. Right you're not going to be doing that if you're walking, are you? Well, I fell over once or twice yeah. in a walk with it and it really hurts. Yeah, but you're not going to, by falling over, you're not going to, you might, might, might hurt because that, you've already no. hurt, yeah. injured that, but you're not going to have, you're not going to injure yourself, basically, you're walking. Shouldn't That's do, the but big they thing, do yeah. get into some yeah. difficult positions sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's quite, I think walking is said to be one of the healthiest 
Yeah, and walking and swimming, I they reckon, are yes. about the healthiest things you can do. Well, I went in that first group that went into the cave the other day too. Oh yes, now I remember, yeah, that was uh, so, the, yeah. where the football, where the boys were, the football yeah. team. Yeah. yeah, the football team. So. And that was the first time in that cave, yeah? The first time the first they'd group, let us go yeah. past the gate. Yeah. You yeah. know, past the first gate. So. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it was very interesting and we met the guys that were actually on the rescue. Yeah, you were there with Vernon. Vern, um, yeah. I uh, forget his second name, but the guy who put the list together, I think he made that list of the people that they ought to contact to come and help, and that's what they did yeah. in the end, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, that, that was an interesting tour, was it, you did? Very, very interesting, yeah. Nice guy, too. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's interesting, yeah. And, that, uh, yeah, it's very cool inside there. <laughs> it was... We were got a bit of sweat up at the end. Yeah. Inside. So it was, you had to go some distance in there? I think we only ended up going 750 metres or oh, something yeah. like this. Yeah. We had another um, kilometre and a half or two or three to go where the boys are actually lost. Yes. But that's as far and as And of I course, they, they were behind water, of course. Yeah. That yeah. was the big difference. When you went in the cave, it was, I guess it was where you were empty, was completely dry. empty, completely dry. Yeah. Well, it's a dry season. And yeah. Parts where we, went, where we went yeah. was fully over the cave with oh, water. Yeah. Oh really? When the boys were oh, there. when the boys were there. When the yeah. rescue was on. When you went in the caves, the caves no were completely water, no. dry. It's dry as a phone yeah. everywhere. Yeah. 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 Which is the way you want it to be if you Well, it's just a few <laughs> drips. <laughs> you know, drip stripping just off dripping, those things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Vern goes in those caves normally, not in the dry season, but yeah. normally twice a week as a hobby for hours and hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is uh well, each he's to his fit, own, you know. He's a fit guy too. I think so, yeah. 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 Oh, great. Well, anyway, uh, Youngie, uh, thanks very much. Been a very interesting chat. And I think it'll... Um, um, just one last thing, actually, uh, you know, to sum up. You've been here more or less 10 years, is that right, living here? Yes. Any regrets, anything that you think people ought to know about if they're thinking about not just coming here for a holiday, but living here? No, moving no, here, living it's, here? Uh, you know, it's just the language difference, which is always challenging. Yeah. And it's bit of fun I mean uh, it's fun learning the language yeah and it's fun communicating with them and you think you've got it all sorted out and you're really <laughs> talking about two different things <laughs> and I mean that you just got to laugh it off and get yeah. on with it and yeah if you get too serious about it you can get stressed out and you might yeah. well forget yeah. about coming here yeah yeah <laughs> but um, it seems you don't have any regrets anyway being here no sure. it was the right decision back then yeah. 10 years ago yeah and um uh, and I guess, what would you say the main difference? If you'd stayed back at home in Australia, in Queensland or something, what do, you, what do you think the main difference would have been if you'd stayed there rather than coming here? Oh, I would have had to, I would have had to keep working. It, basically, the cost would have been very different. Yeah. Is that one reason? Yeah, I would have had yeah. to keep working. And, uh, yeah. and I, I didn't mind that either, but I mean, it's, I'm preferring this. Yeah. Because I did work for the first couple of years I was here. Yes before I actually sold the business out. Yes. So, oh yeah. so that's it. Basically, you're more laid back, I think, here. Yes. It's yes. more relaxing. You've got yep. more time for yourself. You can... Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, usually I'm doing something. I just can't stop yeah. doing things, and that's yeah. probably why I've wrecked this shoulder at the moment. But, yeah. you know, I can't sit down for too long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing is to do things that you, you enjoy doing. I think that's. I just thing. want to climb mountains and see what's over the hill. And <laughs> oh, want to know what's okay. over the next okay. around the next corner. You know. Good. Okay. That's a good. That's a good attitude. Yeah. <laughs> good philosophy. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks again, Youngie. A nice no chat. And uh, yeah. Good seeing you again. Cheers. Thank you.